Hey VTOL fans, uh, I wanted to do just a little walkthrough of my NanoDRAC VTOL build. Um, been getting a lot of questions about uh, how it's set up and uh, just thought I'd address a few of them. Um, you know, I did uh, uh, the HeWing T1 Ranger um, uh, VTOL and I did a, a bunch of videos on that and those are a good reference. The build is actually quite similar in a lot of ways, um, but I'll just run through some of the important things uh, quickly. Um, obviously, we've got the two uh, important uh, prints, the um, tilt rotors on the wings. Um, I'll just show you how those are, how those are set up in a moment. Um, obviously two of them and the tail motor, which um, this one does not pivot. Uh, it's just fixed and it mounts right where the original uh, motor mount uh, 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 is, is screwed in. So um, that works pretty well. Um, I do have a boom on mine, um, but uh, as, as you've probably seen, Sean did uh, his without a boom and it flies equally well. We both did the extended wings with um, uh, cut down. So these are the 40 inch uh, wings that cut down, so that cut down by four inches on each side to make the wingspan, wingspan 32 inches. Why? Um, really just because I wanted uh, you know, a little bit more lift um, and because uh, it's a little bit heavier build. Um, I don't know if it's necessary. Um, in fact, I tried to do it initially on regular size wings um, and it flew, um, but I just felt that uh, it needed a little bit more lift. In fact, I had an issue with elevator authority, um, but Sean's not having that problem at all. So um, at any rate, I used the, the extended wings. I have a um, uh, Maytech H743 um, Wing V2 board in here, um, running Ardu Pilot, and uh, and I have a four-in-one ESC, obviously just powering three motors. But uh, um, I have the links to all the parts that I used on my Thingiverse page. So let me just quickly show you um, kind of a grand tour of this thing. Flip it over. See if I can set this down. All right. So here is how the tilt rotor works. Servo in the wing, servo rod, and it mounts with a ball connector into the 3D print. And the 3D print is two parts. Uh, I'm gonna take it apart in a second and show you. The motor wire extends out the back and into the wing. And the wings are still removable and I'll show you how that works. This is, um, this is actually a K-Power DMC-809. Um, uh, you can also find this servo on, um, Hobby King, it's called the DM, uh, the Hobby King, uh, uh, or Turnigy DMC 809. A really nice servo, coreless, very, very smooth, and has a lot of torque. Um, and I really like how smooth it is for these tilt rotors. In fact, I tried using uh, Emacs servo and it, it wasn't nearly as smooth. Um, and the torque is helpful. Uh, you know, there could be a decent amount of torque placed on the tilt rotor during transition. So, you know, it's important to get a, 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 a servo with a good amount of torque. Um, so let me flip this back over. Let me just take this apart so you can see how, how it works. Stabilize my phone. Um, I need this screwdriver, 
Um, so I'm just using these, um, uh, let's see if you can see here. I'm using these um, easy lock um, connectors to um, keep the two parts together. So let me just unscrew this. That comes off. And then the there's a, a 0.47 inch rod that uh, I've just bent on uh, just bent on one side. Um, in theory, you could bend both sides. Uh, obviously, you insert it and then you bend the other side. Um, <clears throat> I just, just chose to use the Easy Lock uh, um, uh, connector so that I could secure it in place, but still remove it if I need to, uh, like I am today. Um, so you've got these two parts. It's a little bit tight. Can't really maneuver this. Let me see if I can detach the ball connector here. Yeah, okay, so now you can see the motor just screws into this mount. This, this piece is printed as one piece and then this piece is printed as, a, as another piece. And um, the wire, uh, the motor wires just feed through. Um, let me reconnect this thing, slide this rod back through. There is a hole here that when you print, you, um, it's kind of, um, my printer wasn't clean enough to make that hole perfectly, so I had to drill it out. So this hole is, uh, I drilled out with a, um, a what's 1 16th inch uh, drill bit. And um, you actually have to drill out both the mount and the, the the motor um the part that holds the motor um just to allow that rod to slide through so let me just secure this now all right reattach the rod um one thing to note when you do set this thing up you do need to kind of fine tune the length of that rod um, it's important that you get the full travel um, from vertical to um, forward flight mode. And note also that only when you plug it into a flight controller will that servo give you the, uh, get the full uh, 180 degrees of travel that you need. Uh, if you use a servo tester, you're only gonna get about 90 degrees. So it's the flight controller that stretches it and, and gives you the full travel. I also found that I needed to use a, um, the, the tallest servo horn um, that I had. You need that extra length to achieve the full travel um, that you would, you know, to get to, to move that, that tilt rotor from, from vertical all the way to horizontal. Um, it's actually a fairly a good amount of travel. And another point is that the way this thing achieves yaw, uh, and this is, what, this is all the way that Ardu Pilot works, is you calibrate it so that the motors are vertical, like this, um, but it actually assumes and requires an additional 10 to 12 degrees of additional backward tilt. And it's that backward tilt that allows it to yaw because there's no, you know, a tricopter, typically you would have a servo on the rear tilting that rear motor left and right, which allows the, the the quad or the tricopter to yaw, but this one doesn't have that. So this is how it achieves yaw, by moving these motors independently um, backward a little bit. Um, so you need to make sure you have that additional range. With one caveat, you also need to make sure that when you are, if you, if you set that setting to zero, and I, I'll link to a couple of videos where I, I go through the settings, um, you do want to make sure that you're not actually clipping 
the top of the uh, the um, you know, the nacelle here. Um, I did have that problem once, and it was causing me to fall out of the sky while yawing in a hover. Um, so that's something to uh, to keep in mind. Um, so let me show you also just the way that the um, the wings come apart. I'm not going to take them apart here, but I just want to show you what I did here. Um, the motor wires are connected to the ESC, come into the bay here, and then I'm using an MR30 connector to uh, connect the wings. So the, the dual servos here, one for the aileron and one for the tilt rotor, these have um, you know, servo extension connectors here, and there's a little bit of slack so that if the wings become separated in a crash, um, nothing gets torn. And same thing goes for this. And if I want to separate the wings, I can just separate that connector. And this is a MR30, which is a three-prong uh, connector. So let me connect that back up. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I using MR30 is that does that have enough current capacity um, well it typically wouldn't and that's why I'm I set this up on 6s um, so I'm running these um, iFlight motors and they are uh, 19 oh, 1800 kV sorry I'm pointing at the table 1800 kV um, and these are designed to be run on 6S. So by running 6S, there's less current that's going through this connector, and I really wanted to use a small connector like this um, so that it's just still very easy to, to disconnect the wings if I want to. Uh, I like the ability to, to, to disconnect the wings. I also like the ability to, um, uh, the way that the, 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 one of the great things about the Nanodrack is that when it crashes, um, the wings separate. In my case, I'm using a the, um, uh, the elastic, uh, the O-ring um, adapter for the wings. So if that's what all, it's just that O-ring that's holding the wing in place. And if that O-ring breaks in a crash, well, the wings separate and that dissipates all the force of the crash. So that's a very useful um it's very useful that the wings separate. I also just wanted to point out one quick thing while I'm down here. When you do, when you do um, embed your wires the way I did here, you just wanna make sure that there's enough slack. See, when I actually, if you look carefully, when I, when I pull the motor forward, this wire is very slack, it, it very tight. It actually is pulling the wire in, and then when I when I pivot the motor to vertical, there's actually a little bit of slack here. So you want to make sure that you <clears throat> embed those wires with the motor in the forward position, so that you have given it enough slack. Uh, 